week, I promised that we would begin our series, or I meant it, kind of an intro to the series, but the Lord has really been rolling it out, amen. And so this morning, we'll continue in our series, and I want you to go with me to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. Proverbs 24, verse 10. Proverbs verse 4, I'm sorry, verse, Proverbs 24 and verse 10, it reads this way. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. One translation says your strength is limited, and another translation says that your strength is real weak. So let us pray. Father, we just give you glory and praise because you are our strength. Yes, yes. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of the Lord upon our life. We thank you, Father, that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Yes. And we thank you, Father, that we're seated with you, with you, with Jesus in heavenly places. And we thank you, Father, for the potential that you placed in each of us. And we thank you, Father, that today we decree and declare, even before the, the word goes forth, that the potential that you placed in each of us is released. The unlimited potential that you placed inside of us is released. So I thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you flood our hearts with revelation knowledge. That our hearts will be enlightened this morning. That change takes place as we hear. That revelation breaks forth as we hear. And the power to do and the will to do. Your good pleasure springs forth now in Jesus' name. Come on, shout amen. 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 The scripture says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small or it's weak. However, isn't it good that we can increase in our strength? Yes. This morning, I want to talk to you about four key elements that are important, or four keys that are important for our success. Let me first define potential, because this morning, we're going to, we're praying for the release, I've already decreed and declared a release of the potential that God has placed inside of each of us. What I want you to hear is the word potential means latent ability. And there's a latent ability. There's an ability God has placed in all of us to live the life, the more abundant life that he has given to us. It's already been given. We already have it. It already belongs to us. But many times the potential lies dormant because we hear. The scripture says, be ye hearers of the word, but also be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Too often we hear the word. Too often we read the word. We read books. We listen to messages. We watch videos as such. And because we heard it, we think we're doing it. And it just, we deceive ourselves. Just because you read a book on bread, and you know all of the principles inside the book doesn't mean that you are praying. Hello. So what am I saying? The Bible is says for us to be hearers and doers. The beginning of the year, I started out by saying, do what you know. That's the major part. If we just do what we know, there would be a major change in the world. Hello, somebody. But what am I saying? Then I want you to say today, I'm not only a hearer, but a, doer. but a doer. And this morning, and this morning I, make I make a declaration, a declaration that I'm a doer, that I'm a doer of, the word. of the word. Not in my own self-effort, self but by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, we've been trying to do a lot of things in our own self-effort. Yes. And that 
lit last maybe a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe a couple of weeks, and then we fall back into that old routine. But guess what? When we're led by the Spirit, we won't keep going back to the same things because the Holy Spirit is taking us to higher grounds, new levels in Him. Can I get an amen? amen. So somebody shout, there are countless victories that I will enjoy. Say it again, there are countless victories that I will enjoy. Because the greater one lives on the inside of you. God himself testified and he said, is there anything too hard for me? Well, if there's nothing too hard for him. And the spirit of the Lord testifies on the inside of you. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is nothing greater than you. Hello? If God says, is there anything too hard for me? And you already know the answer is no. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing is impossible with God. Then I don't care what you and I face, situation, circumstances, conditions, trouble, trial, test. There is nothing, shout, there is nothing. Nothing. Too hard. Too hard. For my God. My God. So there are countless victories available to us. See, it is not the problem that's the issue. It's the strength that's the issue. It's our strength sometimes is too small. It's too limited. But today we release that limit, unlimited potential. Somebody shout unlimited potential. So we're looking for countless victories. Glory to God. And I want you to see that when you talk about the, the uh, hearer being a hearer of the word, there's so much that we hear but we fail to take action on. So if I hear a lot of information or I hear the word and I fail to take, ish, take um, action on what I hear, there won't be a change. Or if I take a minimal action uh, about what I hear, there's going to be a minimum change. Am I making sense to you? But if I'm diligent, uh -huh. if I'm intentional, if I'm persistent to hear and to do, I'm going to begin to have countless victories. Can I get an amen? amen? Not just little victories, but some. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I've been experiencing acceleration in my life. Anybody? Anybody? Amen. We are working in that. The word of the Lord said there will be acceleration. I'm going to be there. I, I can't tell you what it was all about. But that, there was a young man who had a situation, and he needed to go to court to handle it. And you know what? The, the, the paperwork was actually submitted in, on Christmas Day. The paperwork was completed. It was taken before the judge. You know what? Some of the case has already been uh, ruled on, and he's already walking in what he wanted. Since Christmas? How often do you get into the court system that quick? Not often. Somebody say acceleration. acceleration. Amen. Glory to God. So not only are we going to be hearers, but we're going to do, be doers of the word. If you look at it, I want you to see. Go, hold on. i got to go back. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. Chapter 5. Romans 8 and 5. Romans 8 Romans 8 and 5 reads this way. Oh, she's got it up for me. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. One translation says, people who live following their sinful selves think only about what they want. But those who live following the spirit are those thinking about what the Spirit wants them to do. So this is one of the ways to release your potential, is to listen with, to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do and to obey the Spirit, not to obey what you are desiring. See, the Bible tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. That means that we are to crucify the flesh. Well, the only way that we can do that is through the Word of God. 
and the Holy Spirit working in us. So the Holy Spirit works in us the will and the power to do the good pleasure. The Holy Spirit works in us the power, the ability, amen, the will to do it, and we obey. So when the Holy Spirit says do such and such thing and you obey, guess what? Now you are progressively taking the steps for the victories that you are expecting. Can I get an amen? amen. Verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded, one the translation, translation of carnally minded is to be a meathead. <laughs> but to be carnally minded is death. That means spiritual death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because we are spiritual minded, we have life and peace. Somebody shout, I have life and I have peace. What I'm saying is we are allowing the Holy Spirit, if you are spiritually minded, you allow the Holy Spirit to control your thinking. So the Holy Spirit says do this and you concur and you follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. But if the Holy Spirit is not the one that's leading us and we're just doing what feels good, just doing what we want to do, doing it because we're grown, doing it because I can make the decision to do what I want to do, there are repercussions for every decision that we make. So if I make the right decision, glory to God, we can expect victories. But if I fail to make the right decision, there are consequences. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It just means that you are not following the path that has been ordained for you. Can I get an amen? So this is not a doom and gloom message, gloom message because God loves you. But God really loves it when you're obedient. God really loves it when you allow the faith of the word of God to rise up inside of you to the point that you say, I'm going to obey you, God, because I know that your way is always right. You have a plan for me, and I want that expected in. Can I get an amen? amen. Verse number nine. But be ye not, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so that your spirit, the spirit of God, dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But we have the spirit of Christ. So we belong to God. Is that right? And because we belong to him, the spirit in us rules. So somebody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I want you to rule. I want you to in, my life. in my life, so I can really live, so I can really live. and see and the manifestation, the manifestation of, this of this unlimited potential. See, if you trust in God, the Holy Spirit is going to do his job. See, God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus bled, he died, so that you and I could be reconciled, brought back into favor with God. I need to just give you just a little history if you'll bear with me. I want you to go back to the beginning with Adam and Eve. That was a time of innocence. There are different dispensations. In history, when you go back, there are times in history where God did certain things. And there was a time of innocence. And this is when Adam and Eve were in the garden. But then after Eve was deceived and Adam committed treason, there was now a dispensation of conscience. Now they go from being innocent to being conscious of the fact that now they're spiritually dead. Amen. Then there is this time of human government. This is the time of Noah. And then you move into the time of Abraham, and this is the dispensation of promise. Somebody say dispensation of promise. So in the dispensation of promise, God promised to bless Abraham, told him he would make him a blessing. He said, I'll make your name great. Whoever blesses you, I'll bless. Whoever curses you, I'll curse. Somebody say dispensation of promise. Well, then there was this, the fifth dispensation. This is the dispensation of the law. This is when God gave the law. And this is where the Ten Commandments were given. And God gave all these different laws to govern man. Now let me explain why I'm telling you. When God was dealing with Abraham, he was dealing in a covenant of, he was dealing with Abraham in this covenant of promise. But when God started dealing with Moses and started giving him the law, this was so that man could see their sinfulness. Up to that point, there was no law as it related to sin. And when people say Abraham sinned, when he said that Sarah was his sister, he really did not sin because Sarah was really his half-sister. However, there was no law for sin. Are you with me? Yes. But when God gave the law with 
that says, do not. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. There's a law. So if you stole now, there's a law that said, if you steal, you could be broken the law. Are you with me? So now there's this law. And that law operated from Moses all the way up until Jesus died and was resurrected. Shed his blood. Hello, somebody. Shed his blood and was resurrected. Are you with me? The scripture says that Jesus fulfilled the law. And the Bible says, was the law bad? No, it was good. In fact, it says that the law was holy. But let me tell you the purpose of the law. The law was so that man could see his sinfulness, know how sinful he was, and to realize that he could not live for God and commit and keep these laws without the Holy Ghost, Amen. without God himself. God put it in place so man could see the need that they had for him. And he was. So now what am I saying? You and I no longer live under a law. And when Jesus died, all of our sins and all of our iniquities were forgiven. And now we're in the covenant of grace. And in the covenant of grace, this is where you get what you don't deserve. Come on. So it's not like you do bad, you're going to get bad. And you do good, you're going to get good. It's a blessing to do good. But God still gives you breath when you do bad. And sometimes God is so good that we're in sin and doing things that we know we shouldn't. And things are going so well, we think we're pleasing God. Come on, come on, come on. Because God is love. And God does for us because of his unmerited faith. Because of the privilege that we have to be born again, to be born into the body of Christ. And then Romans 8 says, the spirit of God in us assures us and testifies in us that we are the children of God. One says the son of God. And it says, because we're the son of God, we cry, Abba, Father. And Abba, Father is an Aramaic term that the Jewish people use, meaning father. Well, in America, we call our fathers daddy. So I call him daddy. But we have a father who loves us. We have a father who has gone through a great, to a great extent to ensure that you and I have what we need. We've been born again. We have the Holy Spirit that comes along beside of us to aid us and to assist us. We have the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us into all truth. We have the Holy Spirit that is a seal of our redemption. We've been redeemed. The price was paid by Jesus' blood so that you and I could live a more righteous life. I love that only way that you and I can be righteous because our righteousness is as the filthy rag was through Jesus Christ. And the fact that we've been reconciled, brought back into God's favor. We are now not just called servants. We are called sons. And when you call sons, that means we were adopted. We have the privileges of a son. And when the Bible says you and I are heirs and joint heirs, somebody said heir? Heir. And joint heir. It speaks of the fact that you inherited something. Somebody said, I inherited all the blessings that the Father had. Somebody say unlimited, unlimited. Potential. potential. So instead of us drawing back when things get difficult, we can rejoice because now we step into a situation where now the trial or the test, the difficulty that you and I are facing, that we are going through is just an opportunity for us to develop more patience, Hallelujah. more endurance. Knowing that the blessing of the Lord is already on our life, knowing that we're already blessed in our prayer on the mornings, we say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. So it's not I'm going to be blessed. I don't have to say be blessed because I am. Somebody say, I am blessed. See, I just want to change your perspective because sometimes we think that if I work hard enough and if I'm good enough, You already have an undeserved 
don't deserve it. You get to receive what you don't deserve. Do you hear? Unmarried at favor says you don't deserve it, but you get it. God gave grace for you before you were born again. God gave grace while you were committing sin and need to. Glory to God when we were lost. And I don't care how good you are, your life is still not measuring up to God's standard. The only way to do it God's way is to receive Jesus as you say. Hello, somebody. Somebody said Jesus is the way. He says, I'm the truth. He says, I'm the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. I know they say that, oh, you can come to God all different ways. Will somebody say the devil is a liar? Don't you be deceived. Jesus says, I am the way. If he says, I am the way, there is And so people think they can just live any kind of way, but you can't. When you really love God, you don't want to disappoint him. When you really love God, you want to please him. Sometimes people say, well, when you start talking about grace, it's like you're giving people a license to sin. And then, you know, they don't deserve it, so they just do whatever they want to do. No, when you really have an encounter with God, when you really love God with your heart, and when the Holy Spirit is leading you, you want him to lead you precisely. You want him to lead you accurately. Yes. You don't want to miss God. Amen. Amen. You, aren't you here today because you want to please God? Yes. Aren't you here because you want to know him better? Yes. Aren't you here today because you said, Lord, you've been good to me. Yes. The least I can do yes. is show up so I can be in power. Yes. See, I don't believe that we have a social club here. Right. I believe we have a people who want to be in power. Yes. I believe that we have a people who want to release their potential. Glory to God, who want to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. See, I believe that Jesus walked this earth to show us and to be a demonstration of who we are as a born-again believer. Because when we're a born-again believer, the old me died. And now I'm risen with Christ. And because I'm risen with Christ, I have a new life in Christ. The Bible says that we are new creatures. And so Jesus came to show us that as a born-again believer, you have unlimited potential. You remember Jesus raised the dead? Somebody shout unlimited potential. You remember Jesus fed 5,000? Somebody shout unlimited potential. You remember Jesus healed the sick and delivered those who were oppressed by the devil. If they were their breath, come on. They were healed. In fact, John records and says there's so much that Jesus did in three and a half years that this book couldn't hold it. The whole work. It would take a book to fill the world. Hello, somebody. But he died and he was risen from the dead. So when you and I could step into that potential, it was released for you. Somebody said it's already been released for me. Oh, my God. Now go with me to Romans 5, 1 and 2. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. Somebody say, I have access to this grace by faith. So I have access. So when you have access to something, that means that you can approach God. It speaks of us having a relationship with God. So I have access. You have access to this potential. You have access to this peace. You have access to this joy. You have access to this love. Nobody loves us like he does. Glory to God. We have access. So we have an assurance of God's favor. In the uh, New Living Translation of verse 2 of this scripture, Romans 5, verse 2, in the New Living Translation, it says, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved, somebody say, undeserved privilege. <laughs> undeserved, you know, I'm going to say it. People talk about white privilege. Today, I'm talking about undeserved privilege. An undeserved privilege supersedes what? Come on, man. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We have 
have been brought into a place of unreserved privilege. That's why you can talk about unlimited power. Because when you say that you are a joint heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, there are blessings that are released just because you are the son of God. Not what you did. Because I don't care how long you work, you will never work enough to deserve this privilege I'm talking about. The blood of Jesus, glory to God, bought this privilege for you and me. Somebody say, I, I like that word, un, undeserved. 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 Undeserved privilege where we now stand. So we're not going to stand. You already stand. Already in. You got it. I have, I think you need to say that. I have undeserved privilege. And that's where I stand. I'm not trying to get it. Undeserved privilege. Lord have mercy. This is good to me. Now, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. This is verse 3. Knowing also that tribulations work in patience. The New Living Translation says it this way. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Get up. I know all of you got some trials. All of you going through something, right? The other day, uh, Mom Covington sent me a little girl. She had on sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And she was doing this. And you know who I thought about? Brother Will. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And uh, the little girl is just a little clip. And she's got on these sunglasses. And she's doing this. She's doing it, and it's called the happy dance. So I just want you to put your hand up, and we're going to just do the happy dance. Yeah, because I don't care what you're going through. That problem that you're facing, it's just a matter of time because you already have undeserved privilege. And because you have access to the God that says, is there anything too hard for me? I can do the happy day.
care what is going on in your life, glory to God. And I'm with you in the midst of that situation. So you don't have to be in a toxic relationship. You don't have to be with somebody who's always tearing you down. You don't have to be in a situation where somebody's calling you out of your name and a beating and battering in you. Oh, me. Because you know who you are. You know that you are a son of the Most High God. Glory to God who loves you and cares about you. Can I get an amen? amen? The amplified version of that verse 3 says, Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. So you don't wait till you get through the trouble to rejoice. Amen. See, we wait till we see. Somebody say, I already see it. Because the word says so. I have the victory because Jesus won the victory. And because he won the victory, I have the victory. Those of you on Facebook, type in, I have the victory. With an exclamation point because you got to know that you have it. I can tell you you have it. I can talk to you about it. But you got to see, I have it. I'm not trying to get it. I have the victory. Can I get an amen? amen. So in the midst of troubles, and in the midst of tests, I have the victory. Remember 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 says he always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Can you take just a little bit more? Oh, yeah. oh Lord, our time is up. But anyway, let me just give you these points. Last time I talked to you about strength. I talked to you about four points. That we need strength, we need courage. Amen. Amen. That we need a plan of action, mm -hmm. and we also need a positive mentality or winning mentality. So let me just talk to you a little bit about strength, and I'm going to let you go. When I talk to you about strength, remember the scripture says that if a man, if we faint in the day of adversity, our strength is small, meaning it's limited. So I've come to tell you this morning that you have unlimited strength. Because God is our strength. Mm -hmm. So we sing that song, you are my strength, strength like no other. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it says, reaches to me, is that right? Mm -hmm. So somebody shout, he's my strength. He's my strength. So if he's your strength, God doesn't change. He's the strength today. Amen. He's the strength tomorrow. He's the strength the next day. God does not change. Is that right? So if you have strength and God is your strength, you have strength tomorrow. Amen. I don't care what you face, you still have strength Amen. tomorrow. Now look at Proverbs 24 and 5. Somebody look at 24 and 5. I think she's going to bring that for me. Read it with me. A wise man is strong. What? A wise man is strong. One more time. A wise man is strong. Keep going. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. A man of knowledge increases strength. So what am I saying to you? I am saying then, for us to gain strength, we need knowledge. That may mean... God bless you. Reading this book, we get knowledge. You might watch a video. You might read a book. You may listen to a teaching. But when we want more strength, <coughs> then I need more knowledge. So if I'm saying that if I want to increase my strength so that I'm not limited, remember? If I'm faint in a day of adversity, my strength is small. It's not saying <clears throat> excuse me, that you cannot increase in your strength. It's saying that if you're fainting when things happen and you're falling apart, then you need to look at your strength. Because if you look at a problem, let's say that I have a problem and we both have the same problem. And I'm dealing with the problem. I'll let you deal with the problem. You're dealing with the problem and you just make it right, just, just cruising right along in your, in your problem and you're handling it and, you, and I'm just falling apart. I'm laying in the bed, don't want to get out of the bed. I, you know, I'm going to tell you when COVID, I told you this, but I'll tell you this is a good example. I can help you, help you to understand. When COVID hit and all that stuff was, you were watching all that stuff. I was watching all that stuff on television. I just literally wanted to get in the bed, cover up, and stay there. In fact, some days, I, the first couple of days, I think I just laid in bed to like 12 o'clock. I realized, girl, you better get up here. <laughs> this is not getting you anywhere. You better get in the Word. Because the only way for you to come out of this is to get in the Word. Now, this is Holy Ghost talking to me. 
This is not Norma talking to me. This is the Holy Ghost. Get out of that bed and get in the Word. I started getting into the Word of God, and God began to speak to me. God began to minister to me, and I felt my strength coming back. Mm -hmm. So if you're weak, it's because you need to get in the Word. I'm telling you. Now, my clock goes off at 5. I wake up at 4. And it's like a clock goes off on the inside, and I wake up and I just awake. And I try to go back to sleep because I know my alarm's going to go off at 5. But it's like, get up. I can get up and get in the Word. I can get up and spend time with God. I can get up and get things good. done. You hear me? You hear me? So the problems that I'm facing, I now get up at 4 or 5 at the latest many times, and I'm conquering. And I'm progressing. And I'm moving forward. And I'm walking in the strength of the Holy Ghost. Knowing I can do all things through Christ who is. See, that strength comes when you're diligent. Yes. Yes. Amen. So if you are fighting, your strength is small. I, 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 I'll use Sister Flani as an example to me. She tells this testimony so I don't have to. I'm not embarrassing her. She went through a thing several years ago where she called me, and I was talking to her about it. I believe it was with your nose. What was it? With the, with the eyes. Was it, what was it? For two of you. And she called me, and we talked. And she said, Pastor, I said, are you afraid? She said, yes, ma'am. So I gave her the word. I said, now I want you to read this word, and I want you to confess this word. I want you to read this word. And when she went into procedure, you were happy, right? When she went to that procedure, she got up early. She got there early. She was ready for the procedure. She was just ready. She had just quoted that word so much. She was just ready for the, the procedure, and she went through it with blind colors. Because of that experience, she gained some strength in the Holy Ghost herself. Not my pattern. Now, I prayed with you. You know I did. But not just my prayers, but the word. Building herself up in the word of God. Now when she goes through stuff, she called me up. She said, Pastor, this is what I'm going through. But I know God has healed me. I know God is with me. I know God everything's going to be all right. And every time, guess what? Am I making sense to you? But you and I, I can preach to you. I've been here 20, almost 25 years. This is my 24th year, am I right? My 24th year. I've been preaching some of the same things. But it's not until you think I'm taking this for me. Not just pastor said, but this is mine. I have unlimited potential. I heard God tell me the other day, he told me to tell you, he said, some of you, it's not too late for you to go back to school. It's not too late. I remember as a college professor, I had a 59-year-old woman who started medical technology when she was in college. Got married, raised a family, and the children were all grown and she was divorced, guess what? She came back to school, completed the school, glory to God, and went to work on the third shift job, had this big, huge farm with all these animals. So she worked third shift so she could take care of all of her animals. But it is not too late. You have this untapped potential, Kena. That's for you. There's some untapped potential. I heard it. When I looked at you, I heard the Lord tell me to tell you. That's for you. There's some untapped potential. You've done some great things. Sky's the limit. Come on. Glory to God. There is no limit. Amen. God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all we can. Amen. i got to stop. I'll finish this next week. Amen. Glory to God. But somebody said, I need the strength to release my unlimited potential. Uh, so that means I gotta be diligent in the word. Right. Amen. Amen. You just need to listen to some sermons right. over and over again. Till you hear it. Yeah. You'll hear it. I don't care. I listen to some of the same things over and over again. And every time I listen to it, I hear something I didn't hear. Right. Right. Sometimes we hear something one time and you think you got it. No, it's not true. Amen. Because we've heard so much negativity growing up. We've had so much negativity poured into us as we were growing up, me included, that we need to hear the truth over and over again to uproot all of that mess because we have unlimited potential. Amen. It's already ours. 
We're already heirs and joint heirs of Jesus Christ. We have the blessing of the Lord on our life. We are blessed. We have unlimited potential that has been untapped. But today, somebody shout release. Release. And I'm going to stop right there. Glory to God. Because you have unlimited potential. Amen. And so you are wise. So you increase in strength. Can I get an amen? amen? Glory to God. Amen. Stand on your feet. Amen. To those of you who are joining us on Facebook, you have unlimited potential. And I want you to get into the word of God like never before. I want you to begin to get into the word of God and devour it just like you do when you're eating that favorite thing. You know, sometimes I, we, we have our favorite thing on the meat, on, the, the, on our plate, and, and we just can't wait to dive in. I want you to get up in the morning with the attitude, I can't wait to dive in to see what God will say to me today. I can't wait to dive in to receive all that God has for me because I believe that today there are blessings that have already been released. There are mercies, new mercies. Every morning, he's daily loading me with benefits. So i got to find out what is the benefit for today. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, today is the day for you to accept him so you can take advantage of the undeserved privileges that have been given to you in Jesus' name. That that potential that has been lying dormant in you can be released in Jesus' name. Accept Jesus as your Savior by praying with me, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Savior and as my Lord. I know that Jesus died for me, and I received the forgiveness of my sins. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost so I can live for you. Now, Holy Spirit, I trust you to lead me and to guide me into all truth. Glory to God. And if you prayed that prayer, I want you to know we rejoice with you. The angels in heaven rejoice with you when you accept Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Praise God. If you desire to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by giving to Facebook. I'm sorry. Giving to Cash App. That's the dollar sign. LCC Moncure. Also, you can give via PayPal and that's paypal.me forward slash Liberty Chapel Church. And of course, the address to the church is Post Office Box 345, Moncure, North Carolina, 27559. I want to pray for your blessing to flow in your life financially. But I received a request this morning from Kay. And I know you're watching, because you always watch. I'm sending the word to you right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know all that's going on, but I know God does. And I come to tell you this morning that there is nothing too hard for God. So whatever you're facing, God is with you. And I send the word to you to deliver from destruction. So in Jesus' name, be lifted out of whatever it is that's binding you right now. If it's sickness, I command it to loose you in Jesus' name. And those of you who are listening likewise, I speak healing in Jesus' name. I speak soundness of mind in Jesus' name. I thank God for the strength of God being released in your life right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you for the blessing upon every seed that's sown. I thank you, Father, for the tither that's sowing their tithe, giving their tithes. And I thank you, Father, that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. You are opening the windows of heaven. Pouring out blessings that they have not room to receive. Thank you for favor. Thank you for creative ideas. I thank you for those, oh God, that you're releasing to use their favor, their influence, and their ability to help them in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you for your blessing upon their life. And I speak increase. I speak acceleration in Jesus' name. Those of you who are believing God for a home, I speak acceleration in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the loan application <laughs> being approved quickly in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that once the decision is made and they move in, there'll be no regrets regarding the properties. The properties. I hear properties. Properties that they have selected. Thank you for the resources that will more than adequately meet the needs of those who are sowing this morning. And for those who've already sown. 
We give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. So until we meet again, step into your unlimited potential starting today. You have an undeserved privilege. Take advantage of it. God loves you, and so do I. God bless you. Come on.